And we welcome you into Pioneer Baseball with Pioneer coach Brandon Steele. Hello, everyone. I'm Brian Staten. The Pioneers advancing to the Pilot Flying J South Atlantic Conference baseball tournament this past weekend in Kodak, Tennessee at the home of the Smokies, or really Sevierville. The Pioneers opening up with Catawba and a team that they didn't even face during the regular season, a team that was predicted this year to win the South Atlantic Conference tournament, and why not? Uh, this is a team that is the incumbent every year, it appears, to win not only the conference, but also the tournament that was stopped this season with Newberry winning their first ever South Atlantic Conference tournament and pardon me, their first ever South Atlantic Conference regular season. Seated number one, Newberry, LMU was two, Catawba and Tusculum four. Those were the double elimination teams that got in as we're joined by Brandon Steele. You knew you were going to play Catawba. There wasn't anything that was going to deter that mm -hmm. no matter what happened with the single elimination games. Right. Did that knowing who you were going to face, that helped you prepare for this tournament in any other way? Well, we knew what a Catawba team looks like. They were going to play a good defense. They were going to be fundamentally sound, and they were going to pitch. And uh, that's exactly what they did when we faced them uh, Friday night. And really, they, uh, they ran a bunch of different arms out at us. And mm -hmm. We had Charles going on the mound for us. And it was a back-and-forth game, and I felt like we competed um, pretty well through the, the, the early to mid part of the game. And... Unfortunately, in the eighth inning, uh, they took the lead, and we weren't able to come back in the ninth. Talk just a little bit about Charles, number one. The last couple of times uh, against the LR, just a little trouble early innings, but then really settled in mm -hmm. uh, against Catawba early. Um, they were able to get jump on him just a little bit early. Does that help settle him in, maybe if he gives up a hit or even if he gives up a run early in a game? Yeah, I think he's more effective, really, after pitch 50. Um, because I think early in the game, he's feeling good. He's pretty amped up, and he, he's trying to throw the ball a little harder. And they stayed on some pitches and, and did a good job offensively to put a couple balls in play, a couple singles, and, and get a guy across the plate. And then as he settled in, he, he really started pitching. Um, you know, the velocity was there for the entire game, but he, he realized he had to start making some pitches because they were extremely disciplined offensively. And, then, you know, with two strikes, they shortened up. And actually, I think the first two hits they got were both backside. Guys just stayed on the ball. And... Um, you know, it's a credit to them and their approach and, and knowing they're going to face, you know, the conference pitcher of the year and they had a challenge ahead of them. Um, and, you know, was, I think, you know, going into the ninth, we were tied hits. Uh, they just had a couple more runs than us. I think a lot of teams, when they face the pitcher of the year, they, they almost want to prove, well, our guy should have been or somebody right. should have been or, or in some way. Uh, but I think Charles proved his worth. Obviously, there's no question mm -hmm. about that. A, a game that you talked about went back and forth. And a Johnny Holstaff in a way that, you know, Catawba threw out. A little different for them because they've mm -hmm. usually got that one guy that will go eight. Mm -hmm. And then you bring in that closer, especially for that game one. But you started seeing a lot of arms. Did that disrupt uh, your approach at the plate, especially through the middle and late innings? No, I, I think that was kind of their approach. Uh, they've had the last few weeks is they don't feel like they had a, a true number one. So they just use a bunch of guys in different roles and different matchups yeah. and looks. And I, I think we had competitive at-bats against all the pitchers. Um, it just maybe you start feeling comfortable and get something going against one guy and they'll make a move and bring another guy in. Um, so it maybe disrupt the, the rhythm we had in terms of, um, I guess, the energy and the flow of the game. But I, I think we competed against all the arms. Uh, a big, not uh, big lead, a two-run lead against a team uh, like Catawba seems to be seemingly big, except the fact that they're so explosive offensively. You do have Charles, you do have that two-run lead. Um, how confident was the team feeling right there prior to the eighth inning? Well, I'm sure they felt pretty good about it, uh, the fact that we were up to, but knowing Catawba and the fact that it's a tournament, anything can happen. Um, you know, I wasn't feeling too good about it yet until the last that was going to be recorded. And, and really, that's, that's what happened is he, he left the ball up a little bit, um, got put a pretty good swing on it. Yeah. Um, but still, at that point, we felt like Charles was our best option. He, he was our guy, and, um, and he's shown this even in through the entire season that even if he's pitched, you know, 99 to 100, he's still as effective as anybody else that we'd have. So in that situation, we decided to leave him in and face the batter, and, you know, and the guy stayed on it and, and put it in play. And sometimes you just have to tip your cap. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, another guy makes a, a good swing on a ball. All right, so you're down. <coughs> you're going into the, the you know, uh, that, that ninth inning. And just a little sidebar, you know, the last time the Pioneers faced a Catawba team, uh, Tusculum wins. They don't finish the tournament. They tie. They both go to the NCAA tournament. That's good. Um, and then they didn't face off against each other in the regular season. I know there's a little bit there from especially their side, and mm -hmm. you're trying to prove the worth as well. And I think there were, as I watched it, especially that ninth inning, I almost felt as if there was 
after they got out of the inning, there was a little bit of celebration because it was like, yeah, we did it. Right. You know, we got it. That, not that you would ever see from a Catawba team, typically just for a win in a first round of the South right. Atlantic Conference Tournament. But you do get there, and it seems as if um, they really had you off balance, their, their pitchers, especially in that ninth inning. Yeah, and again, you know, when you have you know, young men going to the plate in a situation like that, they're, they're trying to win it for the team. Uh, and sometimes the, the desire to, to win outweighs the desire to compete. And yeah. sometimes our focus and our approach goes away. And uh, we've had, you know, times throughout the season where that's happened for us, and we've missed it on opportunities with guys on in scoring position and guys trying to do too much. Um, but it was, it was a fun baseball game to be a part of. Um, both teams pitched well, played well. Both teams had, you know, one defensive play kind of hurt them, uh, yeah. whereas Catawba had the, the air in right field, and we had one as well. Um, so it was really a back-and-forth contest all day, and um, we just came up short. We had the opportunity to kind of get the tying run on and, and get the winning run to the plate, um, but just weren't able to pull through. Pioneers fall 5-4 to four to Catawba in their first game of the tournament, and then game number two was against the regular season champion, the Newberry Wolves, who have won it for the very first time. They've got a great pitching staff, and they've got some uh, pretty good offensive players as well. D their defense has been, I think, superb this season. Mm -hmm. They got it to the big lead. Um, and, you know, we talked about Charles. He went the distance, so there, it felt like as if the staff <coughs> was rested, although we're so banged up, we're so injured this year. Zach has given you some very good starts this season. Um, but Newberry was able to jump very quickly and, and build the big lead. But nice to see that the team really did not even give up. Yeah, and, and that's one thing to the credit is, is our group has really developed uh, some resiliency this year in terms of having to overcome some obstacles and not just pack up and fold up when we get behind, especially in the elimination game. And, you know, having watched uh, Newberry uh, play this year, um, their approach, we knew we were going to get some, some hit and run, some, some steal, some bunts and things like that. But... Typically, early in the game, they come out and try to swing the bat, mm -hmm. uh, which what they did against Anderson in the tournament. Against us from, from pitch one is they said, you know what, we're just going to try and, and, and sack, push, drag, hit, and run. So it took us a couple innings to adjust. Um, and then once we did, I, I think we kind of settled in. And, and Zach really didn't pitch poorly. Right. Um, there were some, you know, seeing eye singles. And, and the credit to Newberry is, is their two-strike approach was the best that we'd faced this year. Um, that team really owned their identity of who they were and what they were going to do, and they executed at a very, very high level. Um, so we were just playing a little bit of catch-up to get adapted to that type of team. I mean, their offense is different than most. They're not going to be banging balls off the wall. They're just going to be a team that makes it mentally exhausting on you because at any time something could be going on and, and forcing you to handle the ball in a pressure situation. And once we got past the six run inning, we kind of settled in, um, found a way to, to score a few runs there to, to chip back, but it was just a little too little too late. Was there a sense that you felt like we've actually got a pretty good rhythm right now and, and, and good momentum offensively, especially that you felt as if you would get back into the game? I did. You know, their starter initially um, was doing a good job of, of throwing – fastball breaking ball and I think with their scoring the six runs uh, I think our guys kind of took a, a punch in the gut and it, it yeah. took a couple innings for us to get back into the game um, if we had responded immediately I think we scored one the next inning um, and have a chance to really hold on but it, it's tough to overcome a six run inning um, regardless of who you're playing and the fact that they just kept the pressure on all day um, keeps everybody on their toes. The pitchers start worrying about bouncing pitches, so now they're leaving pitches yeah. up. Um, so as a whole, it was, it was a tough offense to play, where usually you're worried about leaving the ball up for a guy leaving the yard. Uh, with them, it's they may bunt and run, go first to third. You know, So they did a lot of different things that challenged us. Um, I really wish we had applied them the opening week of the year, um, yeah. because if we play a team like that early in the year, to really expose some of the things that we actually didn't do well in that game, uh, I think it would have benefited us. Now, the two teams the Pioneers did not face in the regular season, Catawba and Newberry, they faced in the opening rounds of the tournament, falling 5-4 to Catawba, falling 10-6 to to the Newberry Wolves after Newberry gets the big six-run third to move on to that victory. The Pioneer season comes to an end with 30 wins for the 16th time in the last 17 years. And for first-year head coach Brandon Steele, a lot to learn from this season, especially how to pitch with a – mash unit on that pitching unit and that pitching staff for this uh, Pioneer team. We'll come back, we'll talk a little bit about that, some of the challenges from the year when Pioneer Baseball with Coach Brandon Steele continues after this. Family. Food's here! 
What's it mean to you? To us, it means the people you care about, look out for, and yeah, love. Even if you'd never let them hear you say it. Hey, you're eating hummus? What's wrong with hummus? Here at Ingalls, we have everything you need to gather around the table and give each other a hard time. Because that's what families do. Ingalls. All the ingredients for family. We welcome you back into Pioneer Baseball with Coach Brandon Steele. Just to uh, put the recap on it, the uh, Catawba Indians were able to win the uh, Pilot Flying J Southland Conference Tournament. They defeated Newberry, ranked 10th in the country. Southland Conference, it has always been strong. There's no question about it. And you've been a part of the conference, uh, you know, for so long. Just a year as a first-year head coach going out and doing things. You have a different approach because you have a different view uh, sure. I think from that from that sideline, uh, didn't play Newberry, didn't play Catawba this year. Win seven of eight series down the during the season. Guy stepped up. I think in Nate Montgomery here this last week, a guy that just you know, there's some people that maybe sense, well, this is close to the end of my career, uh, and and really get locked in. I think Nate obviously was locked in. Dalton Martin, a guy that's always been locked in. Charles Hall, obviously a guy that's been locked in. Jarrell McDay, big moment guy. Um, were there some things that stuck out in your mind this year that uh, were quite memorable, things that uh, maybe can fuel you going forward with, with next year's team? Uh, I think the come from behind win against Wingate early in the season um, was a big turning point for us, um, particularly that, you know, it was a transition year for, for us from, from Coach Jones to myself and, and my personality and them getting comfortable understanding the differences. You know, the it's hard for for a team that's searching for other identity sometimes and that's kind of where we were early in the year is is, is trying to search for our identity as far as what kind of club are we how are we going to play um, understanding the expectations and, and trying to meet those every day and I think that was a big game for us to really understand we did have the ability to do something and, and having that happen in the first week of the year I really feel like it set us up to have some success winning uh, you know really every series of the year except for the last one against yeah. uh, the second to last one against one LMU. And, you know, having a lot of these guys back next year on the pitching staff on the infield side, uh, I think is really going to help propel us next year. Um, we have a ton of experience returning, and we have a, a good crop of, of high school and junior college players coming in that we feel are going to be able to compete and also allow us to have some more depth because the, the lack of depth this year was, was a challenge. Yeah. There are some guys that probably needed some rest and some breaks, and we couldn't give it to them. Um, when Jaden went down with his tendonitis and had to be off for a few weeks, uh, we were one injury away from being pretty pretty crazy on the left side of the infield as far as what we're going to do over there. So um, Bryson and, 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 and really uh, Trey stepped up and, and held it down for us to give us a chance to get Jaden back in there and get healthy. Uh, but it's an uncomfortable feeling as a coach to realize that when you're looking around the bench that it's pretty thin at certain positions, but you have depth at others. And we've been working from the recruiting side to really balance that across uh, every position so we do have more depth, which we believe is going to give us more competitiveness and practice to push guys a little bit more uh, and, and try and raise the bar for next year. You know, there's holes every year that you got to fill. What do you feel might be one of the, the biggest glaring holes that you have? Well, it's it's who's going to pitch for us on the weekend. Um, you know, with, with Harbor, he had an injury that we'll have to wait to see how that plays out. And then Zach Sanders um, is a guy that's been in there, but it's really is, is his role best suited to be a weekend guy, or are we better using him out of the bullpen? And then obviously losing Charles, who was our Friday guy. So it's really what's what's our weekend rotation going to look like mm -hmm. next year? Um, that moving forward is, is going to be a huge concern. Also losing some quality arms out of the bullpen. You know Andrew Willis, who was really a bridge guy for us and, and did a lot and even started a couple games. And then also losing our entire starting outfield, including our fourth outfielder, yeah. you know, that's going to be something that we're, we're going to have to work towards. And we feel good about some of the players we have coming in at this point. Um, they always look good until they get here. So <laughs> it's, it's can they make the adjustment to, to play in the South Atlantic Conference? Because coming from high school or junior college, um, the pitching that you see is going to be different than what we see in our league. And it's typically the command of off-speed pitches that guys struggle with. Right. Um, it's not necessarily velocity. It's going to be they're going to pitch backwards. They're going to throw a lot of sliders. Uh, you know, one series this weekend, I know I, I think it was uh, Jarrell was up. They threw six breaking balls in a row. Don't see that a whole lot in junior college or high school. So it's guys making those adjustments. Um, and then continue to make adjustments throughout the season. As scouting reports start getting out on guys, teams will adjust to us. How quickly can we adjust back and, and really get back on top? Well, you know, no question, preseason number six. Seven. Seven finishes the T3 uh, this year was 
Very, very impressive, I think, for a team that, that uh, really the, the pitching staff injuries just decimated a lot of the expectation. I think guys did step up, which mm -hmm. is the reason that you're able to finish third in the league. And then uh, I think after a slow start for Jarrell, you know, really coming through uh, in clutch ways, the, the, what the rest of the guys did this year. Very, re I, I want to say remarkable, but again, I think it's just pioneer baseball. Mm -hmm. I think that you have kind of just followed suit with the tradition that's already been set here. Mm -hmm. And guys that have that expectation when they come here. And, and right. will that be a challenge for you to make sure that guys continue to understand that here's the tradition and this is how rich it is here at the school? Well, I, I think the, this year, particularly with the, the players coming in that we're going to have, we're still going to have a, a good core group of guys that yeah. were here uh, that were either recruited by or played for Coach Jones. So they're still part of that transition, understanding the, the commitment, the dedication that it requires to compete in this league and also the expectations. Um, and, and my goal is I really want to, us to continue to develop and build a program that our alumni uh, are proud of because of what they've done to establish the reputation that Tuscan has now and also that our players can be you know, proud of being a part of and also is going to help us in terms of recruiting. Um, it's a lot easier to recruit to a, a first place team than it is an eighth place team. Right. Um, so for us to, to really have the entire package, we have to continue to take the next step next year, um, clean up some areas, be more resilient in our play from the first pitch to the last pitch of the year, and you know, really dedicate ourselves to really helping develop some of the players that we have. Chair, quickly, he said seventh. Yeah. <laughs> he knew. Yeah. Third place for the Pioneers this season and the Tusculum Pioneers, again, with their 30th win. 16 of the last 17 years been able to do that. Congratulations to a lot of the guys on this team. Just throw out Charles Hall's name, you know, conference pitcher of the year. This year set a national record with 22 strikeouts in a game. Did that against the Queens Royals. Quite remarkable uh, for this uh, pioneer team. But then again, we've come to expect it. And in this conference, nationally ranked teams of, uh, all over the place, Catawba, Newberry this year, uh, taking over that mantle and, and likely getting those two teams and probably LMU into the, uh, South, the uh, NCAA tournament. We'll come back and we'll do this next year. He's got a lot of the uh, fall to go through. I always enjoy the uh, World Series that they, they play, get a chance to go out there and see maybe the 107th inning, uh, just to see how things are going sometimes. Uh, a lot of guys have fun. Hopefully you can uh, continue to stay with it. Pioneer camps and all those types of things you can always visit online through TusculumPioneers.com. For everybody behind the scenes, Nick Forsberg, Jim Miller, and Dom Donnelly, He's Brandon Steele. I'm Brian State. And until next season, go Pioneers.